unless you add some other services or differentiate yourself like nutrition, yeah, then right. it's you're going to continue to ride that wave of depreciation of prices because personal training is next. It's already started. Yeah. You know, once the big box gyms get in there, you know, then it's just a matter of time. So yeah. I agree with you 100 percent to have some kind of effective nutrition program that makes you money, increases your results and increases your personal training revenue. Yeah. I, and increases I, client loyalty. Welcome to Masters in Fitness Business, where you get to stand on the shoulders of giants and get your real life master's degree, real world master's degree from the uh, Masters in the Business of Fitness. And today we have Jesse Dale. And Jesse, um, he's got an interesting story. We started out working at Bally's for those of you old enough to remember Bally's. I know that I am. And it was right up there with uh, Vic Tanny's. But uh, and then worked his way up on several anytime fitnesses as well as a CrossFit and started integrating nutrition into his gyms for, as he called it, beer money. And then it began to surpass his other income streams to the point where they decided to uh, focus on this solely. And it's been very uh, successful for them. So, Jesse, welcome to the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. I appreciate uh, appreciate you having me on. Yeah, no problem. And I said they, uh, we shouldn't leave out uh, your wife, who is your partner, right? Yeah, yeah, Erica Dale. Okay, Erica Dale. So you guys, so tell me a little bit, like how did you start in Bally's? How did you get the bug? Uh, how did? Why did you stay with it this long? Was it one of these things you got it as a, in high school, said this is going to be some good money for the weekend, and then... You decided to stick with it. What happened? Yeah. So basically my story starts, my brother got me into lifting at a really young age, like 11, 12 years old, you know, sand weights in the basement. And uh, my family sacrificed to send us to, to private schooling. So I was either going to excel on at, at sports, you know, and be like the muscular guy who was quick and nimble and all that, or you're gonna, just going to get picked at. We were a, I was a poor kid in a really rich uh, schooling system, if you will. Mm -hmm. So I went that route. I, I just read everything that I could, you know, back from Muscle and Fitness Magazine, Flex Magazine, everything I get my hands on for nutrition. I just kind of became that go-to training and nutrition person growing up uh, in, in high school. Uh, did my first bodybuilding show at 18, the, the novice team Michigan out in Detroit, and was waiting tables. I was about a week out from the show, and I was waiting tables, and uh, it was a bachelorette party. And these people, you know, they're, they're having a good time, drinking it up, and of course, they, they're commenting on the physique. And she said, oh, you got to go see my, my son. He uh, manages the local valleys. So I went in there and I, it might have even been called Victani or Valley Victani or something. Mm -hmm. So went in there. They got me into uh, hired me as a personal trainer immediately. Uh, at that point, personal training really wasn't a thing like it is in gyms now. You know, mm -hmm. so I sold a couple packages right off the bat, just teaching people what I had known through the, the, the magazines. And they were pretty impressed with that. And they kind of fast tracked me up the sales ladder and up the corporate ladder. Uh, from there. But it, as part of that fast track, I started getting one certification after the other. You know, I think I had five certifications, AS, ACSM, NASM, ISSA, all of those, uh, probably by the time I was 20 years old. So, you know, I just felt like the more I can learn, the more I can earn. Uh, yeah. So that's kind of how it went. And then with Bally's, you know, they promoted me up the chain. Uh, gave me my own area in Indianapolis. I took over Dayton. I took over Cincinnati. Uh, they went through a bankruptcy. So my area went from nine clubs down to six. No problem. They were taking good care of us. Uh, but then the second bankruptcy, it went down from six to three clubs. And the writing was just there on the wall. So my wife at the time, we just sacrificed it all. Went all in. Uh, bought at Anytime Fitness. And, uh, you know, that did very well. Then bought another Anytime Fitness, which led to a third and then a CrossFit gym and, and so forth. Okay. And then at what point did you, I mean, because you had four gyms total. Right. And were they all making money? They're all in the black? Yeah. They, yeah. We're actually, closing, okay. we're actually closing one of them this Sunday, which is profitable. It, it, it's okay. crazy. It just, we just had to, it got to the point we just had to get it off our plate. Got it. And then, so at what point 
what was the genesis of, okay, we need to integrate nutrition? And when did you start doing that? About what year? Yeah. So I would say we started that on a smaller scale in 2000, 2010, 2011. I kind of went through a phase of my life. I call it the bikinis and Lamborghinis where I was using nutrition. I was learning as much about nutrition, going to seminars, podcasts, certifications, because I wanted I wanted to win shows. You know, it had nothing to do with necessarily helping other people or anything like that. I just wanted to, th- that was the edge over the competition that I had. Um, and then, you know, as my family kind of went through some health issues, my dad went through uh, some health, health issues. I was kind of like, well, we're doing it wrong, you know, because what I'm applying to myself through this knowledge is not what's being taught out there in these certifications and whatnot. So we launched a nutritional leg in 2010, and it was mainly kind of just coming out of that bikinis and Lamborghinis phase. So I was attracting a lot of those types of clients, you know, a mm-hmm. lot of people that wanted to go do shows or, you know, lose 10 vanity pounds or whatnot. Mm-hmm. Um, but then that kind of spurred into attracting more of like your moms and dads, the people that really needed it. Mm-hmm. And I would say in 2012, we said, you know, there's there's kind of something here uh, with nutrition. And fast forward to probably 2017, when we rebranded into Macro Missionary, that's when our nutrition draft started to exceed our personal training draft. And, you know, in these smaller gyms, like the CrossFit types, personal training is everything, you know. Uh, and then it started to exceed our actual dues. So I, at this point, I'm like, well, nutrition's making the, the largest impact, you know, because people are following this. They're seeing relatively quick results. Um, you know, it, it, it became kind of just a no brainer. So then, then you guys decided to switch and go to go after this full time. So, yeah. so tell me, how did you, how did you first begin to integrate it into the clubs and monetize it? So at first, it was just you know you help someone lose fifty pounds, they're going to speak up quite a bit. You know, I didn't know anything about Facebook or Instagram or social media marketing at all, and it was right around twenty fourteen that uh, I met Erica. And she had built, uh, a, she had, she's in a network marketing company. And she built that from the ground up using all social media strategies. So I was just helping people organically in the club. So a lot of our success just helped from me, me talking to people, you know, doing body fat percent, just basically sharing uh, the knowledge. You know, our, my philosophy was give, 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 ask. You know, so we just give out. We do a lot of seminars local. And then she said, Hey, you got to move this thing on online. And then, yeah, I was a dinosaur. I have Facebook. I'm not into that. I didn't understand it. And, but I did understand that she was 10 xing her network marketing company using those social media strategies. So she then taught them to me. And then, then it just, I mean, now instead of going through, you know, three mile square radius, now we're getting clients from China. You know. <laughs> So I, I would say it was it was her and what she uh, learned at various seminars and, and webinars around the world that, that that she taught me to to really blow this thing up. Okay, gotcha. And then um, just just to be clear for the listeners, so this my, macro missionary that you guys are running, where you can kind of white box it for anybody. Is this a, a network marketing scheme or multi level marketing? No, no. Okay, okay. Got it. Got it. I just want to get that out there and be clear. I don't want anybody guessing. Okay, good. So then, so you took it just from your clubs to the internet. So the entire planet was your customer base then. Yeah, literally. We hired a a gentleman that does funneling and, and Facebook ads. And now instead of marketing to, you know, two, you know, two miles square radius, cause there's a gym on every corner. Uh, here in Indianapolis. Now you're really not in competition with everyone. I mean, there's what, 7 billion people, you know, out there, so many hundred or so many million on Facebook alone. So it just really brought in our scope of impact. Gotcha. Okay. And then with that increased awareness or increased focus on it, did you see an uptick in the members of your uh, clubs joining? Yeah, we actually saw a big increase. Like we were, we would now have people that literally 50 miles away and no joke who would come to us for nutrition, but then kind of get into that culture, you know, cause you know, people don't just want to connect. They, they, they want to, they, they want that bond, mm-hmm. you know? And uh, yeah, we actually had people that would join the gym and literally drive an hour each way because they wanted to be part of that culture. Wow. Okay. And then, so what, 
percentage jump did you see in addition to you guys becoming a destination that people were willing to travel great distances well, to? Yeah, and just to kind of put it in perspective, so we had an Anytime Fitness, 4,000 square foot Anytime Fitness. And, you know, we've got L.A. right down the road. We had, you know, the $19 a month guy right, you know, right down the road in the other direction. And then there was five other Anytimes within a five-mile radius of where we were at. Wow. So I don't believe in saturation. It's all, it's not the land, it's the man, you know, but there, there was definitely no shortage of gyms. And I used to always joke, I used to always joke and say, you know what, uh, at least we're protected. They would never put a planet here. You know, they just can't, there's nowhere for it to go. And uh, an old marsh uh, center, it's kind of like a Kroger, moved out. And I kid you not, less than a hundred yards adjacent to us, a planet fitness moved in. So if it wasn't for nutrition and us being able to, to get a, a, a bigger reach, we would have closed our doors 1,000%. If you look at when, a, when there's a 4,000 square foot ma and pa and a, a planet moves in within a half mile, they normally have about six months to live, much less 100 yards. Yeah. Uh, and that planet came in. Um, and yeah, it, it affected us, but I, I, it's, our nutrition kept us alive. Uh, and it helps bolster a lot of your personal training too. Because when you when you have a nutrition client, they're seeing results. They tend to not just want to come and rent a treadmill from you. They tend to want to be involved in your other higher profit centers, like your group training, personal training, and so forth. So we started to bundle quite a bit. So I would say about a 20% in, uh, increase just in dues because of our nutrition launch. Wow. Okay. Nice. That's wow. great information to know. And then um, I know that it's really, like you said, if you're starting to compete on price, it's a race to the bottom. And, and, and right now there's only one person winning that race right. and everybody else is just carcasses on the side of the road. So, but the nutrition is a big time differentiator. And I think as as the market gets more saturated because there's more competitors, not less coming online every day, you need something to make you stand above the crowd. Um, and I think nutrition is that quite honestly. I mean, it's like peanut butter and jelly exercise and nutrition, but right. most people only focus on the exercise because nutrition is just, it's a bog, right? I mean, it's easy to get stuck in the mire of all the knowledge and wading through that out there. So how do you guys clarify your message so that people hear it and they buy in? Sure. So another thing that we found with nutritional intervention is we were able to build trust a lot easier. So people will tend to have an ego that prevents them from hiring a trainer or just, or they have a tough time justifying the price of a trainer or even small group training. But there's so much white noise on nutrition that if pe people are willing to just put their ego aside and say, you know what, I am hearing 10,000 different things. What do you have to say about this? And if they, if what you say makes sense, like it does with macronutrient based nutrition, they tend to just establish trust really quick and that now they are getting into your ancillary revenue programs uh, because they're seeing results with the, with the nutrition. So basically, our message is diets don't work. You know, the research has is, is proven that. And most of the people that come to us, again, they've, they've tried so many diets, so much white noise. They already understand that. So, you know, they kind of already come, all right, what's, what's the pitch? What do I got to do? Do I got to go back to chicken and broccoli? And then, we, <laughs> you know, and now we're introducing them that, hey, look, you can live in harmony with foods. You know, yeah, I, I drink bourbon. I'm a bourbon collector. I'm, I'm not ever going to say goodbye to bourbon, but I'm also going to have a physique standard and a quality of life standard requiring nutritional intervention that's going to work with my, my bourbon lifestyle or whatever you want to call it. You know, right. I like chicken wings. So a big part of it is to teach people and coach them how to live in harmony with foods. You know, so that would be the, the first thing. And the second thing is, you know, diets don't work, but we're going to introduce different tools. You know, we don't, we don't ostracize any one specific tool. Like if someone comes, maybe for religious reasons, they want to be a vegan, you know, I'll put my ego aside and say, you know what, 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 whether my beliefs are pro or con, that could be a tool that saves their life. That could be a tool that helps them lose their 50 pounds. Same thing with, with keto or paleo or any of the, you know, the hot things that are out there right now. Those are all different tools 
that we can introduce to people or sometimes they introduce to us that we see if it uh, works with their lifestyle. So we find a tool that works with their lifestyle and then it's a grand slam from there. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. Um, and then, so you put that in all of your messaging, uh, you kind of boil that down and curate it into all of your messaging for yeah, your marketing for these things. Okay. So, um, and I, and I'm, fo- and I'm sorry if I keep focusing on when you had the gyms who will get to like the soul nutrition later in the show. Cause I do have, I'm, I am curious about that, but most of our listeners are gym owners or yeah, are, right. are thinking about opening a gym. So how did you first introduce that into the gyms? Like what um, vehicle did you use? And then what percentage of you think came from, from nutrition into personal training, nutrition first and then personal training? Yeah, great question. So the initial launch when we said, okay, we wanna start getting this nutrition program out to uh, to our, our gym members is seminars. So we would take you know a couple Saturdays a month and just start giving away content in, in seminars or teaching people you know, how to build awareness around nutrition and so forth. And then the kind of the catch from the seminar would be, hey, would you like a free nutritional analysis? Give us a three-day food log. They'd give us a three-day food log. And we would just kind of enter it in my fitness pal or King Cal or whatever it would be at the app and just be like, hey, this is how you're eating. This is how we kind of want to evolve your macronutrient distribution to, to see this result. And once we were able to show the people that, they they were on board. You know? Okay. Uh, and then as far as the, uh, the the penetration of personal training from nutrition, it was high. Uh, I would say 40, 45% just because you've already shown them away and they built that trust. And nutrition is, is somewhat of a higher ticket item, uh, you know, $150 a month. So about the price of small group training. So we were able to bundle that and say, hey, like if you really want to 10x your results, I know you've been training for a while, but hey, Look what we've done through nutrition. Now, if we just upgraded your training just a little bit, just think of how much quicker we can do this thing. And again, the trust was built. So they would normally say, yeah, okay, let's let's give it a shot. So and that's when we started to bundle. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. So then you would start to bundle the nutrition with the personal training. Yeah. And did that work on the personal training side, transitioning it over the nutrition side as well? Yeah, yeah, it did. It, 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 it worked quite a bit because then now your personal training clients are seeing these kind of newer clients in your small group programs, but you're seeing them see quicker results. So they're like, hey, what do they got going on over here? Oh, that's our nutrition program. We got a seminar this Saturday. We'll do a food log for you. So yeah, absolutely. And it was just uh, the biggest 10x effect was was the results. Yeah. And then that feeds into um, the the stream too. I mean, so all those streams feed in into one big river. You got yeah. nutrition, you got your personal training, and then you got your spitting out results, which is attracting more people. Got yeah. it. Okay. So you talked about first you, you were just doing it kind of within your community, within your culture. And then um, your wife came on board and said, okay, let's really scale this thing. So how did that happen? And what was the starting jump off yeah, for that? So basically, our nutrition program, because we were really the only ones doing it. You know, other people would, would do a meal plan or, you know, meal one, meal three, you know, the stuff that a lot of gyms might be doing right now. Mm-hmm. But nobody was really doing what we did. So we had actually a lot of local CrossFit gyms. Some uh, Two of the biggest CrossFit gyms in the state said, hey, look can you just come in and and do the seminar and, you know, give us a kickback and, you know, you guys can sell nutrition through us and then give us, you know, X percent. So we started to do that for other CrossFit gyms that were local. Uh, And that, I mean, that was huge. And really what we got from Erica is basically how to take this thing online. So how to market it using Facebook and Instagram. And and that's when kind of my eyes were were way open. Because I was like, I I was happy just doing it for the local gyms. You know, that was great to go in there, do seminars. They're getting good results. But it was was just a matter of time before those gym owners were, were, they were seeing kind of how we were monetizing this. And they're like, well, we're just going to try to do this. Right. Yeah. Keep it in house. Yeah. Yeah, Right. Keep it in house. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. All right. And then so. And then when Erica came in, how did you, how did she convince you? What did she say that made you say, okay, we got to, we got to do this. And then how did she start building it out? How did you guys start building it out? 
So that's when we pretty much scaled it. So right now, everything we were doing nutrition was organic in the gyms. You know, so they would meet, say, with me or they would meet with a nutrition coach and we would do an assessment uh, and so forth. So the time commitment was pretty up, was was pretty high. You know, I mean, they were basically getting personal training, but just using nutrition realm as far as time goes. Mm -hmm. So the biggest thing that I learned from Erica that she brought to the company was doing private Facebook groups where now instead of them emailing me their logs, now they're posting in a group and that is establishing culture. So Mrs. Jones is seeing what, you know, Mrs. Smith is doing over in Tennessee and they're establishing a relationship and they're kind of commenting on each other's. And this was a private group. So it wasn't like out in, you know, Facebook land or whatnot. Right. And it was just a lot easier for us to coach. So now we can coach at 9 p.m. at night, you know, as opposed to having a set appointment uh, and so forth. So that allowed us to keep our price points good and not have to you know increase our price point because we'd be able to handle a lot higher workload yeah because um, your man hours were less okay gotcha. yeah right okay. exactly and it was just easier to share tools using that facebook community than you know, paper meal plans or paper recipes and, and so forth so i would say that she just brought scaling to the business and uh, she brought a little bit of technology to the business yeah and then so how did you start and without without giving away um, the secret sauce, how did you start building and packaging the products so that you could take it online and really scale it? Sure, sure. Yeah, no, no. There's no, there's no secret sauce. You know, so uh, we're 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 an open book. Uh, but it was really creating those those Facebook communities where you have your video library all right there. So if, if, you know, Mr. Smith says, hey, you know, hey, Jesse, you got me on this amount of protein. I, I kind of want to understand like why or whatnot. We say, oh yeah, check out the video in the video library number 18. Or, or I can just tag him in it very, very quickly, whether I'm on a plane or at the gym or, or whatever, you know. Okay. Uh, keep, so being able to have a hub and keep the tools all in one place was really what made this thing save a lot of time and, uh, and, and scale it up. Okay, got it. So it's, it's basically uh, setting up coaching groups. Yeah, right. Gotcha. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So it's not like some product that they can like select and put in the cart or anything like that. Well, I guess the product is the nutrition coaching. Yeah. So and the, the coaching group. The service itself. Got it. You have value adds like the nutrition app with the built in weekly tracker, the exercise app, the meal plans, and, and, and all of that. Um, but ultimately, at the end of the day, they're, they're hiring for a service. They're hiring, hey, they could do it on their own. It takes 18 years. They could do it with you. It takes eight months. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, and this has been, I mean, so successful that you guys decided to focus solely on this and sell the gym. So, you told us about the point where, like, walk us through, like, the growth. Like, at what point did you say, did you get the first idea that, hey, we may have something here? And then sure. what was the thought, like, when it surpassed your personal training and then your dues, all yeah. of that? So we were branded under RZ1 Nutrition. That was the name of our CrossFit gym was Results One or RZ1 for short. And our nutrition draft from there was around five, 6,000 a month. And that's when we were going to other CrossFit gyms. Well, mm -hmm. you know, the other CrossFit gyms, at first they welcomed us, but then they kind of saw us monetizing that. And their thought was, well, wait a minute, we got this guy from another gym and he's coming in here. And what about non-compete issues? Are our members going to go over to their members? So a lot of the CrossFit gyms kind of just said, hey, we're going to keep this in-house. Mm -hmm. And that's what Erica said. She said, hey, look, we need to brand this, not our gym. You know, we need to brand this so it's not specific to us. And that's where we rebranded it as Macro Missionary. That okay. was, I think, late 2017. And that's also when we took it online. And we saw it, it almost doubled. Literally, the probably the second week that we rebranded it to Macro Missionary, took it online. Our draft went to about five, 6,000 a month. I think our Average draft is around ten five, or I don't think our average draft is about ten thousand five hundred, uh, with a high of seventeen thousand five hundred, and that's just the nutrition monthly reoccurring revenue. And that's when we said, we, we, hey, we need to teach this. We need to build a certification out and build a white label program for other gym owners to do this. Gotcha. And then, and that's when you decided 
it's time to get out of the gym bis business and focus on this solely? Yeah, so our kind of goals with the gyms all along were to sell it to one of our managers. Got it. Uh, at, at the time. But the gym that I was talking to you about where the uh, the planet was, uh, <laughs> I can't even make this up, but they they put a what's called a VASA fit, which is opening here in the next month, which is basically they're a $9 a month targeting planets. And they've got the, the hot tubs, the the, 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 jacu the whole nine. You know, like the racquetball courts, the basketball courts, the whole nine. So it's basically like a planet on steroids. So they're moving into an old Kroger, literally closer than the planet was to us. So <laughs> the writing was kind of on the wall. On, on, on okay, gotcha. All right. So and they're choosing $9. Who's going to open the $8 one? Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> it's I like uh, I would see the industry come to a point where someone's targeting a planet. I you know. know. Like, yeah. Yeah, the the yeah, yeah, that's a whole different podcast right, right there. Yeah. Okay, so um um I forgot you <laughs> you got me on that soapbox and I forgot where I was going to go. <laughs> so you decided um so you decided okay, we're going to focus on this. You're going to create a certification, you're going to create basically sounds like a, a licensing program, but exactly white, right. yeah. but white label it. Right. So um walk us through that process. Sure. So when we originally launched this, it's it's very funny, you know, <clears throat> nothing ever ends up how you, how you think it's going to be, you know? Mm -hmm. So when we launched this, I was thinking like a gym owner, I mean, it's just a no brainer like that. Th these gym owners would be the easiest sale in the world because we feel their pain. We have the low cost. We had the low cost guys come in and we, we weathered the storm because of nutrition, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, but what we found is, a lot of the gym owners are just a little bit apprehensive. I, I think that's because, you know, hey, if they're a franchise, is the franchise going to come out with something? Or is there legalities with nutrition coaching? And that, that, that's, that's, a good, that's a good topic to, to you know, to bring up. Um, but a lot of our people were just uh, trainers. We, get, we have some nurses. So some people that they just had a passion to help others. Maybe they had a weight loss story themselves. Not, not all of them. Uh, so I have a passion to make others and they want to la uh, launch a side business in this. So that's the majority of our licensing or what we call our macro missionary millionaires right now. We just recently brought a few uh, anytime owners on board. And that's really what I want. Because if, if, if I know that they're going to be the big stories. They're, the, they're going to be the ones getting a ten, fifteen thousand dollars dollars a month draft so that I can go and sell that story to some bigger fish. Gotcha. You know, it's great that we have Mrs. Jones, who's making fifteen hundred dollars a month, you know, in five or six hours a week. That just doesn't sound really impressive to a gym owner. Yeah. So, why do you think like the smaller, like um, family owned, for lack of a better term, or, or locally owned gyms or studios are more resistant to to it at some of the big box gyms? And why do you think the the big box gyms will do bigger numbers? Is it just volume? Yeah, I think that it's now you mean from a nutrition standpoint? Yeah. Okay. I think the I don't think anyone's really touching it. I think the big box gym is gyms are, are doing a regurgitation of the government RDA with some meal plans or an, an ask the dietitian hour or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I don't think anyone that I've seen uh, is really capitalizing on nutrition the way that it can be capitalized on. Uh, I, I just don't see it anywhere. I see everyone's maybe kind of dabbling. Uh, and I guess the biggest pain point that I've seen as far as why is people seem to be concerned with legalities or they just don't understand. They just don't know. They don't know themselves. So they feel, you know, inferior. How, how can I teach this when I don't even know how to eat? Yeah. Um, you know, my two cents is I think they're, got so much on their plate with their training business and running the day to day to that. They don't have the time. They, they have the desire, but they don't have the time to, yeah. to donate to that. And then when they do, it's kind of a half ass effort. So they get half ass results Yeah. Um, versus bringing somebody in who has a passion for it and wants to go at it full steam and needs to be consistent. I mean, because when you build a business, I mean, it starts slow. Nothing there's, I mean, I'm yeah. still waiting for that hockey stick moment. I don't know about yeah, that. Right, guys, right. It sounds like you guys have had it once you did the online launch. You guys got that hockey stick moment, which is which is great, which is why I wanted to have you on the podcast. So um, what does your certification look like? 
So basically the certification teaches the, the first third is basic exercise science principles, exercise physiology and so forth. Cause you know, nutrition and training definitely go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. The middle section is going to be, okay, great. You got Mrs. Jones, uneven body fat distribution. How do you even come up with a macronutrient distribution for her? And then the third, uh, so the science of macronutrient based nutrition. And then the third third or the last third is basically the business portion. Uh, and a lot of it is just habits, reducing inflammation, microbiome, because even, even macronutrient based nutrition is just a tool. I mean, let's, let's be real. You know, when we're out ordering sushi, I'm not weighing out the asparagus and the sushi, you know, nor do I have to. So we use the macronutrient based nutrition just as an awareness tool. Uh, we have a business model called area. And the first A is, is awareness, just builds people, uh, builds, build people's awareness. You know, people think an egg is, is a protein. Egg's not healthy. It's not unhealthy, it's, but it's majority fat, 87% fat. You know, most people don't realize that because their grandma told them, hey, eat your eggs. It's your protein for strong muscles and bones. So they're, they're out eating eggs. You know, most people, they, they buy a protein bowl from Starbucks with the expectation that it's, there's protein in there when it's, you know, 80%, you know, sugar and, and, and non-protein sources. Again, doesn't make it bad. We eat protein bowls. But this, the labeling is a little bit misleading. So in that awareness is just getting people to be like, oh, I had no idea. I had no idea that the salad dressing is more calories than a Big Mac in this healthy salad. Right. Yeah. yeah. So it's just education. Yeah. 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 Just educate him that going to um, KFC and getting the, the chicken that's fried in plant-based oils. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, it's right. not healthy. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> like, what do you mean it's not healthy? I had a client once looked at me in a straight face, and this is when I realized it was about education. You're right. Yeah. And he goes, I said, What'd you have for breakfast before you came in? He says, an egg McMuffin. And I looked at him, I go, An egg McMuffin from McDonald's? He's like, Yeah. He goes, That's healthy, right? I'm like, Oh, we got some work to do, brother. Right. Um, right. So, it's, you know, it's about education. I mean, because a lot of people, a lot of clients really think they're eating healthy when in fact they're not. And, and that's the frustrating thing. They're just not aware. They yeah. No, you know, they, they, they sacrificed to eat the 1800 calorie salad when yeah. they would have been better off with the Buffalo burger that they right. really wanted. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You know? So, so how long does this certification take and what's it cost and all yeah, of that? So the certification alone is a thousand dollars for the course. Uh, it can be done all, all online. If you're already kind of like a nutrition guru, so to speak, um, I would say 60 days minimum. You know, you okay. want to address the information. You don't just want to check the boxes, but you really want to go through the material, go through the webinars and everything. Um, I would say for someone who's they're just passionate about it. They want to learn, but they're new to nutrition. I would say four to six months. You know, okay. Really, really digest everything. It's very user friendly, very easy, but they're going to be introduced to, to, you know, some concepts that would be relatively new. Gotcha. So. And um, I like that you say that the the macros are, are just a tool Absolutely. Uh, because my wife is a functional diagnostic uh, nutrition practitioner. So oh, wow. I understand how, how important the gut biome is, but also how yeah. uh, dynamic it is, right. how everything affects it. And certain, certain things have more effect on it than others. And that can definitely play into your overall health and systemic inflammation, all of that stuff. So I like that you guys yeah. have that module in there. Um, yeah. We just actually launched a series on the microbiome and an anti-inflammatory diet and, and so forth. And that's, that's a big part that and habits. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. But so, no. And then after after they go through the course and they get certified, um, then what happens then? Yeah, so there's two people that I guess would, would do business, for lack of better terms, with Macro Missionary. There's the ones that are going to take the certification, and maybe it's just for personal knowledge. Maybe they want to frame it, put it on the wall next to their other certifications. Um, and then there's the Macro Missionary Millionaire Program, which that is, is our white label or our licensing program where we say, okay, this is how we're going to monetize that certification. This is how we're going to use it to impact lives, get clients and run either a side or a primary business. Gotcha. You know? And so is that, there a cost to that? Yeah. Yeah. So the cost to that is 5,000 to buy in. That's all the licensing and everything, our apps, our white label, and then anything that we do moving forward. 
So for example, uh, one of our macro missionary millionaires has a client that is trying to get pregnant. So she wanted an article on, okay, what is what should I be eating if I want to get pregnant? So we wrote that up for her. She put her logo on it, sent it to the client because she has licensing rights over anything, any work that we perform for her. Okay. And so, uh, so five years to, to get all the materials buy in for life? Yes. Yep. So that's for life. They pay one ninety nine a month, which goes okay. into advertising. We're actually giving the uh, the affiliate owners or licensing owners leads. So like, if an affiliate calls me right now and says, "Hey, man, the, you know the gym's been slow this week. Can you hit me five nutrition leads?" They're going to get five nutrition leads from our funnel. From I mean, these people could be all around the world that they can then go work um, and get in their nutrition plan because it's all based off online. Nice. And so they can. After that, then they can run these, um, run this online as well as inside their clubs. Yeah, yep. We would encourage them just so they can have the maximum amount of impact with the maximum amount of people to stick with our online format. But they can absolutely. We do have affiliate owners that just they like the organic touch a little bit more. Okay. So, yeah, it, it works. I mean, we ran it out of our gyms using the online platform for you know several years. Okay, gotcha. All right. And then, um, so you guys have been doing this since what, 2018? I would say that we, well, we rebranded Macro Missionary in, 20, uh -huh. uh, in 2017. Uh, it's more 2012 is when we had RZ1 Nutrition and we're, okay, we're, gotcha. we're more of a local presence then. Okay. And then it's when you rebranded that you decided to launch. Yeah, that's when the certification budded from it and, and so forth. Gotcha. Okay. And then, so since, you guys have gone full time. I mean, how many, like we were talking about this, but we recorded what's like break down your, your demographic so far. So as far as uh, average client. Or yeah. Yeah. Like what type of people are, are signing up for your certification? So basically the, our, our clientele is going to be probably 35, 40 plus. Um, that's typically going to be your ones with the dispo disposable income for something like this. That's mm -hmm. also going to be your people who they've tried it all. You know, they've done Atkins, they've done this, they've done that, they've done the RDA. So they've kind of at their wits end. Uh, so that would probably be the biggest, you're, you're, you're probably the bread and butter would be your 35 to 40 plus. Gotcha. Uh, it would be about 65, 70% female based. Um, and then, you know, you definitely do have your outliers. Like you're still going to get some of the younger folks in there that want to do something more performance or, you know, get ripped or whatnot. But majority of our marketing is not that necessarily that de uh, that demographic. OK, it's most people like, uh, you know, working class people are not working class people, but yeah. average average people who want to lose weight. Yeah, who are just frustrated. They've tried it all. They've done they've done the tune in broccoli thing, lost the weight before they've yo yoed their entire life. And they're more ready for a, a sustainable lifestyle than another diet. Okay. And then, so not a lot of gyms sign up for this or have so far. Well, initially, a lot of the franchise gyms, they all have some type of nutrition thing, you know, in the works. You know, so I think a lot of owners are maybe waiting for that. And I think a lot of owners, I think you have to nail it right on the head. They're worried about it being too much of a time commitment. But that's kind of what they you would use us for is, is we'll put all the time and effort into it. You guys are just doing the, a lot of your organic sales. Got it. So. Got it. OK. And then um, so of the people that are making a business out of this, how are they doing? So, no, everyone that is in our beta group, it, I mean, they're happy right now. Now, for some people, happy is fifteen hundred a month. You know, I mean, that, it's depending on where, you know, what season of life they're in or where the you know, age and where they're at in life, where other people it might be, you know, 1500 is great, but they're, they're trying to get 10,000 a month. Right. And that's why we're trying to build the story so that we are able to be more attractive to some of the gyms. You know, we when we had the gyms, we proved the model at, at an average up to 10,500. So we want to have more stories along those lines. But in four to six hours a week using our system, you're going to have no problem doing fifteen to thirty five hundred a month. Gotcha. So that's good to know. And the thing that I like about what you guys have done, because I know myself as a gym owner, as a studio owner, that's exactly where I am. I I know that nutrition is important. Right. Um, and I know like a, 
uh, through my wife and my general managers uh, getting certified in FDN, I know the intricacies of nutrition and how important they are. But there's so much information to wade through. It's hard to get a starting point with somebody. Yeah. And it's hard to grab their attention long enough to begin that starting point with them. Right. So I like that you guys have put 100% of your focus in it. It's not half-assed. It's thought out. It's complete. Um, it's proven, it works. So it's something that once, you know, you, if, like if for me, if I wanted to dedicate somebody in my club to get certified, I can do that and then work with them on building a, a revenue stream out from that, yeah, which that, I like. Yeah. And I know everything in there is good and thought out and, and everything. And so I can just kind of plug and play. Yeah. And I think when we originally went to gym owners, we were we we went at them the wrong way. We were going at hey, you're gonna run this, and we kind of changed our approach. And we just we are now starting to get more gym owners on board, changing the approach of hey, you're gonna get certified just so you know what's going on, but you're gonna have your GM actually run the groups, run the program, do the sales, and so forth. And we actually built a non compete into our agreement that if this manager quits, they they can't go an affiliate by themselves and, and take anything. Yeah, so, which is huge because, you know, you, when you lose a trainer, you typically they take their clients with them. Yeah. So to put a, a safeguard regard for it. That's anything. that's excellent. And along the lines of non-compete, do you have one like a non-competitor clause, like a certain radius? If you buy a certification, does that put a radius around the club? No, we don't just because our lead magnet is worldwide. OK. So yeah. But so, what if what if like I. I bought in, I got a license and I'm selling the product under my brand. And then my competitor next door gets a whiff of it and he wants to buy in. Ah, gotcha. That, that might be something that might be uh, some good business advice for us. We haven't had that come up yet, um, but that might be something that we consider doing. Yeah. Yeah. I would definitely want some kind of exclusivity clause in there for yeah. sure. I would yeah. feel a lot better about plopping down that dough. Cause that's something I feel pretty confident. I get a return on my investment oh, uh, yeah. for big yeah. time, but not if the guy next door is selling the same program. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Well, Jesse, man, this has been great. Um, I appreciate you coming on the show. I, I want to respect our time. Sure. And, we're, and now we come to my favorite part of the show. It's the <laughs> end where I ask my questions, my three questions that I ask just about every guest on the show. And uh, it's not a gotcha thing, but I just I think I get some of the best answers from these questions. Sure. So my first one is what is your most successful failure? By that, I mean, at the time, seemed like a devastating failure that you weren't going to be able to recover from. But you're able to take lessons from that and apply them to propel you to greater success down the road. Yeah, I would say my divorce in 2012. Okay. It came, you, out of, came out of nowhere, like a sucker punch from out in the back. Like did, didn't see it coming. Um, but it was, it was, I feel it was well-deserved and that's what really, that was my low point. And that's probably the reason why I am the man that I am today. Can you say more about that? Yeah. So I just, um, I just got comfortable. I mean, the gyms were doing good. The gyms are rocking. Uh, and I just stopped personal development. I stopped reading, stopped listening to podcasts, stopped going to church, just, you know, just kind of was riding out life. And, you know, when you stop growing, you start dying. You know, and I, I was, I was literally on the inside dying as a husband, dying as an athlete, dying as, you know, a coach, dying as other people's mentors and just kind of phoning it in. So that was, uh, yeah, I guess that would be kind of God's way of saying, all right, well, if you're not going to use these gifts that I've given for you, I'm just going to take them back. You know, and yeah, that was devastating. I about lost half what I had. I had to split up the gyms, you know. Yeah, okay. So yeah, I would say that that failure was the, the best success failure. That's a great question. Yeah, that's a great answer. I really like that answer. Um, and then my next question, I mean, because I, I the reason I, because I've been through a divorce. Um, yeah. And man, it strips your identity. Oh, man. Yeah, you have to rebuild yourself. Yeah, at least who well, you think you are. Problem, though. The lawyers, they love divorces. <laughs> the, the longer, the nastier, the better right. for them. Right. Yeah. Um, so then my next question is, in your time in the fitness industry and in the nutrition industry, what has been the biggest surprise that you've had to deal with that you did not see coming? I didn't see. I mean, if you look at, I'm sure you've heard this a million times from other guests that you've had. 
there's not one industry that I could think of with that is depreciating like the fitness industry is. So for example, an iPhone today is obviously more expensive than an iPhone five years ago. Everything is going up, but the gym industry is going down and just ticking down. And now we've got like the vast of doing nine bucks a month. And, you know, I did not see, I mean, at Bally's we were selling $70, $80 a month memberships, you know, no, yeah, they, they might've come with some personal training, nationwide access and all that. I did not see a $10 a month membership. I mean, I remember 19 used to be like, whoa, they're selling 19 a month. And we did it at Bally's. It was a three day a week plan. I remember that being like, whoa, that's crazy. And so I didn't, I did not see the, uh, the depreciation of dues to the extent that it is today. Yeah. I, you know what? You're absolutely right. And I don't see it changing anytime soon. No. Especially no. if, if somebody's trying to undercut planet. I never thought I would see that. I'm like you. No, no. So so anything like uh, there's, I had a guy on Don Murphy. He has two huge goals gym up in upstate New York. And the way he combated that is by adding service. He has a sports Absolutely. complex. He's got a shake bar. You know, he's got, you know, it's like a half, it's like a dozen studios in, in one gym. So they can charge more for membership. So unless you add some other services or differentiate yourself, like nutrition, yeah, then right. it's you're going to continue to ride that wave of depreciation of prices because personal training is next. It's already started. Yeah. You know, once the big box gyms get in there, you know, then it's just a matter of time. So yeah. I agree with you 100% to have some kind of effective nutrition program that makes you money, increases your results, and increases your personal training revenue. Yeah, I, and it increases I, client loyalty. Yeah. Well, I, big time. And I think that small group training is, is or functional fitness, whatever you want to call it, is is hot. Yeah. You know? so, I mean, I guess you could give the $10 guys. It is kind of a blessing. I think they are fo forcing us to level up our service. Yeah, for know? sure. Because at the end of the day, you know, when that planet came in, yeah, they took a little bit, but they also gave back. You know, people just, they, they want good treatment. They want to feel special. They want red carpet. And when you level up your service, that's really what people want. They will pay for it. Yeah. But you have to do that. Yes. You can't just roll yeah. out some uh, rubber flooring, throw some right. dumbbells out and open your doors. You can't no. do that. Yeah. You have to have that service. You have to be professional. Right. Um, okay. Then my last question, and it relates to your first answer, is where do you go for your personal and professional development? So, you know, it's funny because people think like we're these big world travelers. They're like, oh, you travel all the time. Must be nice. And we make a huge I, I always believe that the three, if you want to know about someone, really know about the, them and their motives, see where they spend their time, energy, and money. Just go on their Facebook, whatever. Where are they spending their time, energy, and money? We make a significant investment to do a lot of seminars. We're going to be in Vegas at the GoPro event. Uh, he's got uh, Eric Worre. He's got a Grant Cardone will be speaking there. Last year, he had Magic Johnson. Uh, we do a lot with my wife's company. They have guest speakers that, that you know come out from all around the world and how to tell your story. Obviously, reading. So I'm not a really quick reader, but you know I try to digest at least a book or two a month, um, and then uh, podcasts. But really, whenever whenever we're like out of town or on vacation, we're, we're there doing some type of seminar, whether it's mindset training, business development, or a nutrition seminar. So, you know, I'll, I'll still get nutrition uh, certifications. I'll get one uh, every year, year and a half, so to speak, just to, just to stay on top of it. Gotcha. You know, gotcha. and I'm just a big believer. If you're not if you're not growing, you're dying. And I used to think that was just kind of a cliche euphemism, but it's it's really true. Yep, absolutely. After after uh, a certain age, you start to die biologically. Yeah, I think it's 27. And, yeah. And then. After that, it's an uphill fight. And if you stop fighting, guess what? Right. You're going to fall down the hill. So you like, better start fighting. Muscle, use it or lose it, you know? Exactly. And, you know, and it goes for your mind, too. Yeah. And knowledge and behavior and all. I agree 100%. So can you tell us, do you remember the last three books that you read and what you got out of them? Yeah. So we did a series on the microbiome. So I read, you know, two books on the microbiome. Uh, right now I'm reading As a Man Thinketh. Uh, which is a super easy read. 
Uh, one of my favorites is uh, James Clear Atomic Habits. So we oh, yeah. Whole, yeah. Part of our, our certification is a lot of habit training. So there's a whole section just on how to have a client form healthy habits. Uh, Purpose Driven Life was was a good uh, was a good book. Influential. OK. And then um, where can people go if they want to find out more about you, your wife, um, macro uh, missionary? Yeah. So, the, yeah, they can go to Instagram, macro underscore mis- missionary underscore or Facebook. Uh, probably the, the best way would be our personal accounts, uh, Jesse Dale or Erica Dale with a K. OK, and then all of that information will be in the show notes. Just go to trainerjim.net. By the time this comes out, I might have my new website up. It'll be mastersinfitnessbusiness.com. Uh, but either way, go to either website and click on this episode of the show and the links will be in the show notes. Jesse, man, thanks for taking the time. This is yeah, great. I really appreciate it. You got a great thing going on over here. So. Uh, thanks. I appreciate it, man. Well, you're added to it. So uh, I appreciate your time, man. Have a great uh, yeah, rest sure. of your day.